Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out. It's a fun event, right? So to start it off, before I get going, how many of you guys were fort builders when you were young? You got a show of hands? Okay, good. Up there, too, we got some fort builders? Okay, okay, good. All right, well, let's chit-chat about some forts. <laughs> Hello, my name is Pete, and I'm a fort builder. I say it like an AA meeting because sometimes it feels like an addiction to me. I love space, details, landscapes. I love our built environment. This is my most current fort that I'm working on. But before I got my hoity-toity architecture education, I was a rambunctious kid, and I was a master fort builder. I built forts in chicken coops. I built tree forts equipped with zip lines before they were cool. But then, along the way, we unlearn our childhood adventures and we start adulting. We forget about creating, about identity. We forget about adventure. We learn by typing and Googling and living in our digital worlds. We forget why we built our forts to begin with. So let's talk about components that make a good fort. Always, always, it's location, location, location. <laughs> it's a spot that makes us happy. It's a place with beauty. It's around nature. It's a place where we feel safe. It's a place to entertain and call our own. And then we get into materiality. It's all about building with what's available. It's about finding interesting materials. It's about being cost effective, because most kids don't have tons of money. It's about the ease of transport, because bikes can only carry so much. It's about buildability. You have hammers, nails, duct tape. And then we try to introduce comfort <laughs> for our friends, our family, our visitors. We try to find a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. A place to ease or alleviate our feelings of grief or distress. A place to let our guard down and a place to hang out. And finally, we fulfill the basic need of shelter, protection from the elements, the cold, the wet, the snow, the wind, protection from the danger, from people, from parents, snowballs, water balloons, protection from our sometimes chaotic world. So now we look at these things, location, shelter, materiality, protection, comfort, identity, and we realize it sounds a lot like home. Forts are not that much different from our homes, from what each and every one of you call home. So let's take a look at some examples of some good and bad forts. <laughs> let's start with scale. This little stud probably doesn't understand the implications of scale. He's a kid, he shouldn't. He doesn't understand the use of resources, embodied energies, material life cycles. He uses what makes sense, as he should. But there's no excuse for this. <laughs> this adult has the responsibility to know the wastefulness in this house. After all, 40% of the total US energy com consumption comes from buildings. Only a seven-year-old should have watchtowers and multiple pools. Not the President of the United States. <laughs> and a good fort should create community. This is Timmerdorp, or Hammertown as it translates. It's where 650 kids, aged 7 to 12, built a village in four days. No parents allowed. They built pools, swings, slides, gardens, and even trading posts. I'd rather live here than there. Do I even need to say anything here? Follow the dollar to the solution on this one. This has zero identity, zero relevance, zero playfulness, and it's a bad example of what community can be and should be. But hold on, it's not all bad. This little gem right here uses the basic principles of form to be successful. Shape, size, color, texture, position, orientation, a form found from exploration. But fear not, not all adults are lost either. Sometimes, a small percentage of times, we get it right. As Peter Zumthor, one of my favorite architects says, you could never have imagined when you started out that this would be the outcome. Or in simple terms, from another great one, form follows function. And then there's resourcefulness. Using the obvious, thinking about creative ways to solve a problem, 
embracing our imaginations. Overall, it may just be stacking sticks, but it's the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties. And who doesn't want to hang out in there? But don't forget, the adults can also stack sticks. We can incorporate our experiences, our education, our learned skills in a way that benefits our built environment to make it more interesting than how we found it. And this is a good example of that. And then there's the key ingredient, playfulness. Because there's no right or wrong answer, there's no yes or no, there's only what makes you smile. Because at the end of the day, we all wanna smile and we all wanna go play. And who doesn't wanna hang out in a hyper-color igloo? <laughs> and because being playful induces creativity, and creativity can help lower stress and anxiety and give you a sense of purpose. Engaging in creative activities contributes to an upward spiral of positive emotions, psychological well-being, and feeling of flourishing in life. So, when you go to build your next fort, all you fort builders out there, think about scale, think about form, think about community, be resourceful, and just go have fun. Because no one likes a dumb fort. Thanks for listening, and thanks for coming out, everyone. <laughs>